Okay, so before we start with transformers, uh, we will discuss, uh, we will actually do some uh, practicals and the uh, way we have studied in DC machines uh, using MATLAB, we'll try to analyze, analyze that. We'll try to see how we can control the speed of a motor, how the saturation curve uh, of a motor can be determined, how exactly a motor works. So we'll uh, see all of this and uh, so this is your main MATLAB when you open your MATLAB this interface is uh, available to us so click on Simulink click on black model once you click on the black model uh, this window will appear to us so this is your Simulink model so Simulink basically allows us uh, to base connect different uh, blocks and using graphical user interface, we'll be able to uh, determine, we'll be able to basically analyze different systems. You can use, you can analyze all types of electrical systems, uh, mechanical systems, electronic systems, uh, aeronautical systems using Simulink. So you can click on the browser, library browser. Uh, so click on the library browser. So this is what will be available to you. Fine. So first of all, in the Simulink itself, there are some commonly used blocks. These are simple blocks like integrate. Uh, let's move to continuous blocks actually. So these are simple blocks like integrator, derivatives, uh, state space models, transfer functions. Some of this we have already studied. Uh, then you have the dashboard, you have discontinuous systems, discrete systems. So these are simple drag and drop type of uh, blocks. So you can simply drag them, connect them to each other and see the response uh, of different uh, systems fine so if you can uh, if you have studied already transfer functions so you can simply drag a transfer function apply say for example from sources you can apply a step input and in the sink you have the scope once you connect this uh, you can set this uh, simulation time by default it will be 10 so if for example i am running this simulation for five seconds i simply run this double click on the scope you will get the response of your system fine so we are not actually going to be dealing with transfer functions right now we'll be studying machines so uh, depending upon which MATLAB version you are using. So the MATLAB version that I'm using here is 2020. So uh, here you have actually Simscape. In the previous versions there was Sims Power instead of there was Simscape was separate, Sim Power separate. But in the newer version, Sim Power has been included within the Simscape. So you can click on Simscape, and in Simscape there is electrical. And under electrical, uh, you have specialized power systems. This specialized power systems is what we'll be dealing with. Uh, under specialized power systems, you have fundamental blocks. And under these fundamental blocks, we have the machines. So this is our DC machine here. We can simply drag and drop our DC machine here. Using control R, you can rotate this machine. Fine. So, fine. This is okay for me. So, as you can see in the DC machine, there is a field winding and there is an armature winding. So, you can connect the DC machine as you want. You can make it a separately excited DC machine. You can make it a shunt. You can make it a series DC machine. Accordingly, we'll have to make the connections. Uh, now, what I'm going to do is uh, go back to the library. Under fundamental blocks, you have electrical sources and you have DC voltage source. Drag and drop this DC voltage source here, connect it to the field winding. You can uh, click on the DC voltage source and you can simply copy, paste it. So I will apply now this second DC voltage source to the armature winding. So this becomes a separately excited DC motor because you're having you are feeding the field winding separately. You are feeding the armature winding separately 
using two DC voltage sources. If you double click on this DC machine here, you can use a preset model. So under the preset models, you can have different types of machines. For example, I'm choosing number two. So this number two here, actually uh, the rating of this machine has been given to us. It's a five HP machine. It's a 240 volt. Uh, 240 volt here means the armature voltage is the rated armature voltage is 240 volts. The rated speed of this machine is 1750 RPM. And uh, the field voltage, the rated field voltage of this machine is 150. So the rated field is 150. The rated armature is 240. So I click on this and I will set this to 150, the rated field voltage. I double click on this and set this equal to 240. So I now set the armature voltage to 240, the field voltage to 150. Fine. Uh, there are two more connections in this DC machine. There's this TL and M here. I'll go to the browser. From the commonly used block, I will one, I will try the constant block connected to TL. So what this TL is basically is it is the load torque. So instead of applying physically a load here, uh, in, a, in say for example, you are running a motor, you are there will be a physical uh, uh, say for example a water pump you are using your motor for pumping water now we cannot physically apply any load here but we can specify the amount of load that we are applying in newton meters say for example i'll double click this and i will say this is 10 newton meters of load i'm applying to this dc machine right now again go back to the browser you have bus selector here Uh, connect this bus selector to this M. So this M basically represents measurements. So this basically represents all the measurements of this DC machine. Uh, double click on this bus selector. Delete these two, signal one and signal two. You can highlight, you can select all of these uh, parameters of the DC machine. That is the speed, it's in radians per second, the armature current, the field current and the electromagnetic torque that's actually generated in this DC motor. Select them. You can output them as one bus or you can output them as separate buses. Fine, so okay. So you have four different connections now available to you. Uh, to connect this, uh, we'll use again from the commonly used block, you have the scope, drag and drop it here. Double click on the scope. Uh, go to the configuration properties of the scope. Click number of input ports is equal to four. And you can apply this. So you have, you can see the uh, number of connections of the scope have become four. I can also determine the layout, whether I want to plot all the four on one graph or I can plot them on two or three or four. So I'm saying I want to plot them on four different graphs. So this scope is now available to you. It is showing four different graphs. So uh, you can connect them one by one, or you can do one thing. You can hold the control button on your keyboard and select the bus selector and then select the scope. It will automatically connect all the Right. So you can uh, um, increase the size of the bus selector and the scope so that this here is visible to us. The first signal is speed, the second signal is armature current, third signal is field current, fourth signal is electromagnetic torque. Uh, as far as the motor goes, the rated more voltage, the rated speed of this motor was 1750 RPM. The measurement is available to us, but it is in radians per second. To convert it into uh, RPMs, I will use a gain block here. Fine, just simply drag this gain block and uh, fit it in between these this speed. Uh, so what is available to me is speed, 
radians per second i want to convert it into rpm so i will multiply it with uh, 60 divided by 2 pi Uh, fine so I actually multiply this with 60 divided by 2 pi so that whatever is available to me here is in rpms not in radians per second uh, so whenever uh, a power source is used in simulink go back to this fundamental blocks you have a power GA block here uh, you need to keep this power GA block here because Wherever a power source is used in a Simulink, uh, it needs there needs to be certain analysis done with power signals, and for that we have the power GA block. So it will help us calculating the it will help us in determining the FFT analysis, uh, the harmonics in the system. So you can actually see you can go to the tools, the steady state analysis, the machine analyzation. Uh, load flow analysis, uh, LTI, L, LTI analysis. So all these analysis can be done using this power GUI block. And for us right now, we need to just keep it on uh, on the side because if we do not keep a power GUI block in this system, it, the system will basically not run, and uh, and that's not something that we want right now. So this is our complete connection you can simply click on run so double click on the scope you can see your uh, results here so this first graph is the speed that we know it is in rpms now and you can auto scale this using this we had the since we are applying the rated armature voltage the rated field voltage so the speed should be equal to 1750 so using this magnifying glass you can actually check it fine so it's slightly more but it's around that 1750 mark uh, so this second one here represents your armature current so this is the steady state value of the armature current it's 10 amperes uh, but the starting current is very high it goes as high as 300 rpms the field current is very small it's only one amperes uh, the electrical torque again the starting torque is around 400 newton meters but the steady state torque is equal to 12 newton meters this was uh, this is your system and you can actually also decrease this uh, load you can keep it zero again run it so the torque has become zero and the speed has increased fine so actually when you are unloading the system your speed will increase so if you keep this around 20 so you can see the speed has now again decreased it has become uh, equal to 1750 so actually 20 newton meters uh, is the rated load of this machine at which 1750 rpm is available to us fine so you can also see the electromagnetic clock generated by the system uh, so this is how a separately excited DC motor can be simulated in MATLAB. Now let's do the, uh, let's first of all uh, do the speed control of this motor um, by you, by varying the armature voltage. Fine, we have studied the armature control method and we have studied the field control method. To do that, go to the browser, go to the library and the dashboard 
you have different types of uh, systems one first of all i'll drag this dashboard scope here what this does is that instead of opening the scope i can directly view the scope in this window itself fine i'll show you how to connect it and secondly i can drag any of these i can drag this gauge or this horizontal gauge linear gauge i'll just drag this slider here fine so i keep this slider here i will do one more thing i'll drag a linear gauge also i'm dragging a number of things so double click on this uh slider so this window will appear to you what you have to do is you have to simply click on this uh armature voltage so this will appear here click on connect and the minimum voltage that is available to us is zero the maximum voltage that's available to us is 240 okay this so this is your dc voltage now variable dc voltage source that's available to us now. Mm. I will use another of these sliders. I'll keep it. Now this second slider, this DC voltage source. Uh, this is first one is for varying the armature voltage here. Fine. So keep it 240 right now. The second one, I'll be using it for varying the field voltage. Field voltage can vary from 0 to 150. Okay, so this is your field voltage variable block. And this third one that I've actually used, I'll use this for varying the load on this machine. Fine. So max minimum is 0 and maximum is, uh, let's keep it 25 okay so now i have three sliders i also have the scope here i can increase the size of the scope uh, again double click on the scope and then simply click on the scope now i have all these options available to me i do not want to see the current i'm not interested in field current i'm not interested in talk I am interested in the speed. I'll also see the armature current. Let's see both of these two. And therefore, okay, fine. So with, I'll first simulate this again and I'll show you how this graph is visible to us. So here the armature current is shown in red. The speed is shown in blue, fine. Now what I want to do is uh, I will, increase the simulation time from five seconds to say for example i'm running this for 200 seconds fine click on run so this is running to for me right now what i'll do is now i can actually decrease the armature voltage so you can see the effect on the speed fine so you can decrease the armature voltage and simultaneously see the effect on the speed i can increase it back where so this is how you can vary the armature voltage uh, in MATLAB and see the effect of varying armature voltage on the speed of the machine. So by decreasing the armature voltage, the speed of the machine, speed of the DC motor decreases. Uh, now keeping the armature voltage now constant, I will now change the field voltage. If I decrease the field voltage, uh, What will happen is that since RF is constant, I'm not changing the field resistance and decreasing the field voltage. That means IF decreases. If IF dec uh, not decreases, IF, IF is called VF by R. Yes, IF will decrease. Uh, with decrease in field voltage, IF will also decrease. If IF decreases, the flux generator will decrease. If there is flux weakening, we expect that the speed of the motor should increase beyond the rated speed. Right? So again, let us run this. So this system is running right now. It's running at 1750 RPMs. 
I am decreasing the field voltage. You can see the effect on the uh, speed of the motor. It's now going beyond the rated values of the speed. Fine. So this graph is auto scale itself as soon as the simulation finishes. So you can see with decreasing VF, we were actually able to decrease the field current with decrease in field current, the flux of the machine decreases. And with flux weakening, we expect the speed of the motor to increase beyond the rated speed of the motor. Fine. So this is what happens with uh, decrease in field voltage and decrease in armature voltage. Decrease in armature voltage decreases speed. Decrease in field voltage increases speed. Uh, now let's see the effect of varying load on this machine. Right now the load on this machine is 20 uh newton meters so let's run this so it's running in steady state condition it has achieved steady state now let's change this this gauge is not varying let's delete this use a slider or varying the speed of this uh, system fine, 0 to 25. So run it. So now let's see what happens with decrease in speed. Decrease in load. You can see with decrease in load, the speed of the machine increases. With increase in load, the speed of the machine decreases. So this is actually an expected behavior. As you increase the load, then speed will decrease as you decrease the load speed will uh, as you decrease the load speed will increase as you increase the load speed will decrease so you can uh, in the same manner you can basically uh, you can try this if you have matlab is available with you if you, it's possible for you you can try and simulate uh, the separately excited DC motor and vary the speed of this DC of this DC motor using both armature voltage control as well as field voltage control. So this was your separately excited DC motor. Right? Also, you can double click on this DC machine. You can go to the parameters and you can actually see the armature resistance values. Armature resistance is 0.78 ohms. Uh, inductance is 0 0.06 ohms. Field resistance is 150 ohms as we expect the field resistance to be very high. Uh, inertia of this motor is 0 0.05. So this is actually uh, how we can, um, for a separately excited or the shunt, field, shunt connected motor, these will be the ratings of your uh, armature as well as the field resistance. Okay. Uh, we have run the separately excited DC motor and saw how we can vary armature voltage. Similarly, we can design a shunt motor. Uh, although you will have to change the resistance, field resistance, because these machines uh, in MATLAB have been designed for separately excited purpose, we need to design uh, we need to analyze uh, we need to actually use proper values of field resistance armature resistance etc uh, now what i have done here is simply connect to the field winding in parallel with the armature winding and the same voltage source will be feeding the two windings uh, so once we do this we can run this and uh, this will be the plot that we will obtain here. So again, uh, by varying the armature voltage, we can decrease the speed of the motor. So this is your decreased speed with decrease in armature voltage. And also you can decrease the load on the motor to increase the speed. 
or increase the load on the motor to decrease the speed. So you can see the performance of your shunt DC motor in MATLAB uh, by simply connecting the field winding, nature winding. Uh, what we can do also do is we can uh, plot the torque speed carried through this system. Go to the sinks. You have X Y graph here. Connect the X axis to torque. Connect the Y axis to speed. Uh, go to the properties of the system. So set this to minus infinity. Infinity minus infinity infinity fine okay this so run this uh, I'm going to <laughs> minus infinity okay run this so here you go so this is your XY plot this is your expected torque speed curve of a uh, DC shunt motor. Uh, this initial portion of the graph that you are seeing, this is because of the transients. Uh, from zero to 600, if you see, this is the torque speed profile that we have studied. And uh, the these characteristics can be plotted in MATLAB uh, using So what we had actually studied in last, uh, what we had studied theoretically was an ideal scenario. Uh, look at the speed curve. The speed curve here is not uh, exactly, we do not have a speed. That's, uh, let me open the scope. Where the speed is this one. So you can see here, the first plot, this is your speed. The speed is not directly going to 1000 RPMs or whatever it is. There is an oscillation. So this oscillation is something that we had not, we had not uh, discussed while plotting the torque speed profile. We were plotting an ideal torque speed profile, wherein the speed was, uh, from the start, it was the rated value. And uh, with respect to torque, it would have been something like this. Uh, anyways, uh, in, in either case, we are able to plot a torque speed profile. Leave aside the transient response. The steady state response shows that a torque speed profile is a falling curve. Uh, so we have done the speed control. We have studied the torque speed characteristics. We can similarly plot the torque speed characteristics of a separately excited DC motor. We can again delete this and see uh, how the DC motor torque speed characteristics will look like. Uh, let's see for a series motor now. Yeah. What to do is uh, I'm going to now connect the field winding in series with the armature winding. Right. So this is your connection. How you can actually now connect your uh, DC voltage source to the field winding and the armature winding while field winding and the armature winding are in series. Also make sure uh, since, um, so say for example, you add this motor, uh, the original field resistance of this machine is very high, but now when the field resistance will be in series, it will not be very high. So for in, for now, I'm going to do uh, just, I'm going to assume that armature distance and the field resistance are same. Uh, okay, this, just simulate this, and you can see uh, your, you can see uh, how this motor is working. Again, by decreasing the armature voltage, you can decrease the speed of this motor. Fine or by increasing the load on the motor, the speed will fall. By changing the load as well as the armature voltage, you can see the behavior of this motor. Uh, 
now talk speed profile is the series motor what i'm going to do is i'm going to set these uh, values for x min and x max y min and y max okay this run this for about 10 seconds fine run it and here you have it now ignore this straight line that's at the top is just the transient behavior uh, the more this graph here shows you the dc motor series characteristics and that's the speed of characteristics what i can do is um, i can keep this around 15. So this is my dc motor speed of characteristics point uh, we had actually discussed this thing that for a dc series motor uh, the curve will be something like this of this nature now since this scale on the y-axis is uh, much larger it is between 0 to 2000 while as this on the x-axis is only between 0 and 15 so you are seeing a graph like this slightly uh, because of the nature of this uh, nature of the length of the y-axis and the x-axis i can try to reduce the y-axis graph further and i will make it between 200 and 1500 So here we have it. So use proper values of the XY graph. So this will be your speed torque characteristics of uh, separately as we have studied. This, these are the values for X and Y that I have chosen right now. Uh, for a shunt. This will be the speed torque characteristics. There's actually this oscillatory behavior that's actually causing the, the multiple graphs to be plotted. Mm. So there's no way I can actually skip from 0 to 0.5 seconds and plot from 1 to 10 seconds uh, in Simulink. I can do that in workspace, but since that's not possible here, so removing that oscillation right now is slightly difficult. One, I will try this. See here, let's see with this. Let's see with this value of load. Maybe the oscillation is less. There's still this oscillation that's actually causing this graph to uh, behave like this. Anyways, uh, so this is your DC shunt motor, DC separate excited DC motor, and um, DC series motor. We have plotted the torque speed, char torque speed characteristics as well as seeing how we can control the speed of the motor. Uh, designing compound motor here is not possible. Uh, so what else we have to do? Uh, now let's take this DC machine as a generator. For that, what I'm doing is first let's study a separately excited DC generator. So the armature that was actually being fed from uh, DC voltage no longer will be fed using a dc voltage source uh, what we can do is <clears throat> uh, on the measurement block you have a voltage measurement block connect this across the armature take a scope you can directly access the library by just simply typing anywhere in this window and clicking on the scope you get the scope 
Uh, so you have connected a voltmeter across the armature winding. What else we need to do? We have already, uh, the field winding is already being fed using a DC voltage source. So no issues there. Uh, what else do we need for a generator action? We need this machine to rotate. For that, what we are going to do is, uh, the mechanical input here was actually initially a torque. We'll uh, substitute it and use speed as a mechanical input. <clears throat> And this is speed in radians per second. I'm let's let this be 180 radians per second. Uh, so let this be 200 maximum. So now I can actually change the input speed. Uh, it can be a turbine that's actually feeding the system. And uh, what else? What else we need? Let me remove the scope. Or let me add this scope here this is my voltage measurement i do not need the current measurements uh, i'm actually going to use three different scopes this is a scope number one control c control v dashboard dashboard scope i'm using three different dashboard scopes what i'll be doing is Uh, three dashboard scopes uh, on one scope i am plotting speed on another dashboard scope let me plot the voltage so the maximum value let this be minus three i don't know exactly what will be the amount of generated voltage let me keep it up to my 300 fine and on this scope i'm going to plot current it will auto adjust the y axis uh, once it runs so this is my speed this is our voltage and this is our armature current let this run so you can see i have set the speed to be 180 radians per second so that's around somewhere uh, in the range of 1700 between 1700 and 1800 rpm somewhere so that you can see the speed is 1700 rpm there is no oscillation speed now there cannot be an oscillation speed because speed is not now an output here speed is the input here so it's going to be constant but you can see as far as the voltage is concerned there is uh if it's clear to you i can show it from the scope as well so there is a transient period uh, and in this transient period the voltage is building up so uh, voltage here is somewhere around 230 volts fine so it's actually giving us an armature voltage of 230 volts armature current is right now zero uh, for armature current to flow we need to apply a load here now we can actually apply a uh, load we do not need a mechanical load now we can have an electrical load we can take any element from this system mm. Mm. 
let me have this parallel RLC branch. I will be connecting this control R. So I'm connecting this RLC branch across this RMH. You know, so DC voltage is being applied. I do not need RLC, I need only R. Let the resistance be 10 ohms. Fine. So I can now apply this voltmeter. Voltmeter is connected in parallel across the load. And you can see an armature current has now flown in the system. And it's showing negative value because uh, now the direction of armature current has reversed. Now this is no longer a motor, this is a generator. So uh, what's expected if it's 230 volts and uh, 220 volts somewhere around there, and your armature resistance was 20 ohms, so you are expecting a current of 20 amperes, fine. So you are getting a 20 ampere current uh the magnitude of this current is negative that indicates the current direction is no longer into this machine it's out of this machine so this is your dc motor separately excited dc motor generator uh, so what we did it so what we did in this uh, simulation different from that of the motor is that the armature is not being fed uh, now with a voltage source this machine is now being uh, fed with an input uh, to a turbine that actually rotates its turbine uh, so if uh, this motor is rotating and the field is already connected the armature is going to produce the voltage that is shown here fine mm, now we can do one more thing uh, let me, let's increase the simulation time. Run this. So this is running. We can change the speed. We can decrease the speed. And you can see the internal generated voltage of the machine is decreasing. We know internal generated voltage is equal to K phi omega. So if omega decreases, voltage also decreases. If it increases, the internal generated voltage will also uh, so we actually studied this as a voltage control method where we can uh, change the speed to increase the vary the speed to increase or decrease the emf uh, we had actually discussed that it's more feasible to change the field voltage so let's let's do that let's change the field voltage and see how the internal generator voltage changes mm. For that, we need again a slider here. And the slider is going to change. We are going to vary this field voltage. Fine. This field voltage can be varied from 0 to 150. So let's run it. So if you change the field voltage, you can see the current field current decreases that means flux decreases if flux decreases the internal generator voltage will also decrease how no effect on the speed of the machine in case of a generator with decrease in flux because the speed here is an x is an input it's not an output speed is being fed through a turbine and that speed of turbine or whatever the source of speed is it's not going to be affected by change in flux now so this is your separate excited dc generator again if you can need to plot uh, the terminal characteristics of this machine you can plot vt versus ia or vt versus you can also plot vt versus if now let's see the graph. You have terminal voltage VT. Let me remove this resistance. VT and what else? We have the armature current here. 
Mm. Now let's keep the resistance. Resistance needs to be there in the system for current to flow. So we are plotting VT. VT is on the y axis. Uh, VT is on the y axis. Armature current is on the this is actually the load current in this case load current and armature current are same load current is on the x-axis so uh, i'll actually comment this out let's uncomment it and let's run the simulation for five seconds and let me see the x is armature current zero 10 let it be up to 30 let this be between 0 and uh, the voltage will go as high as 300 point so this is okay now run this and there is no graph the current is negative here so we cannot have zero uh, we uh, i cannot use this current here this current is actually negative i need to i need to have a positive value of current mm. i keep it like this i'm going to use a gain block here The issue is the current has reversed, but once we do it theoretically, we assume the current is still positive and flowing outside. So to make sure that this current is positive, I'm going to apply a negative mark with minus one. So this is actually a very small step time. And this is the curve that we are getting here right now. Yes, this voltage source because the field voltage will actually decrease the field voltage. So let me increase this field voltage again. Okay. So now we can plot this. So this is your uh, voltage versus current profile this is actually showing uh, you uh, showing us um, the transit behavior we do not need the transit behavior we need to check how voltage will vary with current variation vary this current will actually vary the value of this resistance r or varying this resistance r So what you can do is you can actually apply a, a variable residual stat uh, in parallel with your original resistance and uh, you can vary this resistance so as this resistance is varying this polar resistance will vary the load is varying on the system uh, you can also see you can have a look at the graphs uh, the voltage 
voltage is increasing. There is a certain voltage build up. As shown here, you can see voltage is building up. You can even change the slope of this curve. And see this voltage build up more uh, predominantly. And this, you will be getting only this much portion of the graph. Uh, we have actually seen that this will be a straight line like this. Uh, decreasing straight line. Uh, we are getting only some of the values because practically whatever we have obtained theoretically, we are not assuming the transient behavior or the transient operation of the device. But practically, what happens is that the voltage does not uh, is not instantaneously available to us. There is a certain transient period during which time the voltage will rise and it settles. Uh, so the terminal characteristics are something that we plot once the system is already running. Now that's not possible for us to plot right now uh, uh, with the uh, using Simulink, and therefore you'll be getting only some portion of the terminal characteristics. This is only representing half part of the portion of the terminal characteristics of the DC generator. So we have seen both DC motors as well as DC generators, uh, the terminal characteristics, the speed variation, voltage variation, how voltage can be varied in the DC generator, how speed can be varied in the DC motor, terminal characteristics. Most of these things, uh, some of the things are clear. Some of the things may not be clear because this simulation is uh, and it's not an exact uh, behavior of a motor. It does not take into account a number of things like the noise, like the real time operation, how we are not even bothered about starting of the motor. As we as discussed in class, as discussed, uh, we use starters for running the motor. Here we are actually directly starting the motor. There is a there is was a direct online starting there's a peak peak overshoot and um, the whole there is some transient periods so those things are not taken into consideration those some of the things are actually here not true for a real machine but most more or less uh, this does show an email this does, this is a uh, somewhat a representation and a physical every physical operation of a real time machine uh, apart from this uh, you may regarding your lab experiments you may have to study different parts of a dc machine that's not uh, possible to do using matlab and we have to also plot the saturation curve the saturation curve basically is a plot of ea versus if uh, now again with MATLAB, the thing is, you cannot saturate the machine uh, completely. It's not possible for us to show saturation effect because it's not a real time machine where there will be, there is going to be saturation. Here, the field current can be increased infinitely. Uh, so. Hopefully, some of the things are clear, how speed is varied, what effect uh, this has on speed variation, on voltage generation, in case of a motor, in case of a generator. Uh, if possible, some of the experiments will be shared to you in, uh, in your, some video lectures, through other video lectures. In the next session, we'll actually now start with the transformers. So that's all for today.